An artificial neural network are types of machine learning algorithms that can be used to make predictions on a variety of tasks. They work by learning from data and then using that data to make prediction in a new one. One way to evaluate an artificial neural network is to see how well it performed on a held out test set. A held out test set is a set of data that the artificial neural network has not seen before. If the artificial neural network can make accurate prediction on the held out test set, it indicates that the artificial neural network is generalized for new data. Another way to evaluate an artificial neural network is by using the confusion matrix, which is a table that shows the true and predicted values of a classification problem. It can be used to see how well the neural network can classify data and to check if there is any particular uh, classes of data that the neural network is having trouble with. In today's tutorial, we are going to talk about making prediction and evaluating an artificial neural network. So, without any further delay, let us get started. Alright guys, before we start, I would highly recommend for you to watch my previous tutorial about building an artificial neural network, which I will leave a link for it in the description of this tutorial, along with the notebook that I'm going to use today. So, let us start now. Alright guys, we are now in making prediction and evaluating the model phase. Please again check my previous tutorial about building an artificial neural network. As we can see, we have a customer with the following information and we are going to use our trained artificial neural network model to predict if the customer will leave or stay in the bank. So let us implement this together. In this code cell, we are going to implement our solution. So now how to complete the prediction? Of course, we need to get first our artificial neural network model and then we need to call the predict method to predict if yes or no the customer will with the following information will leave the bank. We will add some parentheses here and then we need to enter this information related to the customer. We need to pay attention here to use double pair of square bracket. It is very important to remember that any input of predict method should be 2D array whether it is a test set or a single observation. Everything should be in double square bracket, which will form the 2D array. Basically, the format expected by the predict method is always a 2D array. Inside this array, we are going to enter the information of the customer. One more thing to pay attention to is to check whether we have performed a hot encoding or not while training the model. For this customer, the geography frames was encoded to 100, and that is exactly what we have to enter here as the first parameter. Then all the rest is easy. For the credit score, we will enter 600, and the mail was encoded as 1, so we need to enter 1 for the male gender. Then for age, we enter 40, for tenure, we enter 3. And then for balance, we enter 60,000. And number of product, we enter two. Then for does this customer has a have a credit card, we enter one. Since one correspond to yes and zero correspond to no. Is this customer an active member? We enter one again. And for the last parameter, estimated salary, we enter 50,000. Now the predict method should be called on observation to which the same scaling was applied as in the train. And since we trained our artificial neural network with a scaled value, the scaled values of the features, well, the predict method has to be called on this observation to which the same scaling was applied. This means that we have to apply our scalar object to scale this single observation. 
This is very important. We have always to check if scaling was applied during the training. And yes, it is the case here, and it's always the case for neural network, and therefore in the predict method we need to scale the single observation. Please always remember that on the test set or new observation when you deploy your model to production, you can only apply the transform method. And that is what we are going to call here the transform, which will take the whole observation in the double square bracket. Basically, that's it. Now we can run that cell and get our prediction. But remember that when compiling an artificial neural network model to an optimizer or loss function in the matrix, remember that in the output of our artificial neural network, which is a sigmoid activation function, which therefore will return this prediction in the form of probability. Meaning instead of getting the final outcome as 1 or 0, whether the customer left or stayed in the bank, well, we are going to get the probability whether this customer left or stay in the bank. So, let us see what we are going to get with this prediction. So, we are going to put all this command in a print function. And let us run this cell. And we get that the predicted probability that this customer leaves the bank is approximately 0 0.032. Therefore, it is, predict it is predicted that this customer has very low chance to leave the bank. And if you don't want the outcome in the form of probability, well, the trick uh, and to convert this into final uh, prediction is very easy. We just need to add here, before the last parenthesis, the large symbol and 0 0.5 and why is that because all this command return exactly the predicted probability and here we choose a threshold 0 0.5 to say that if the predicted probability is larger than 0 0.5 we will consider the final result to be 1 because the predicted probability is larger than 0 0.5 which means that uh, there is more than 50 ch percent chance that the predicted outcome is 1. So we will consider it to be 1. And however, if the predicted probability is that the customer is below 0 0.5, we will consider it to be 0. Of course, we can choose different value or thresholds, uh, especially when you have critical outcome or critical decision. And in that case, you will increase the threshold. But in our case, let us just pick the default value 0 0.5. And this totally makes sense for our case study. And therefore, if we now execute this cell, we will get uh, uh, the final outcome, which is false, which means that the customer will not leave the bank. And by this, we finish from the part for prediction a single observation. Now we have two more tasks to complete. The first one is to predict the test uh, set result by placing next to each other the vector of prediction and the vector of real result y test. And finally, we will make the confusion matrix to get the final accuracy in this test set. So first we are going to display next to each other the vector of prediction and the vector of real result. Remember that our classifier will return the prediction in the form of probability. So we are going to convert our predicted probability into predicted binary outcome 0 or 1. This, first, uh, this code first uses the artificial neural network model function to make a prediction on the x-test data. The artificial neural network is trained artificial neural network. The predicted function return a list of predictions where each prediction is a number between 0 and 1. The next line of code uses the greater than operator to convert each prediction to a binary value. If the prediction is greater than 0 0.5, it is converted to 1. Otherwise, it is converted to 0. The third line of code uses the uh, num numpy to concatenate function to concatenate the y prediction and the y test array. 
This function takes two array as input and return a new array that contains the element of both array. The first argument tells the concatenate function to concatenate the arrays along the first dimension. And also this final line of code prints the result. This array contains the predicted value and the actual value of the x-test data. So let us play this cell and then we will get the result display next to each other. First on the left we have the vector of prediction and on the right we have the vector of real result. We can see that we don't have all the result display because we don't we have a lot of observation but we can see that the prediction looks pretty good. The first customer uh, in reality stayed in the bank and it is predicted to stay in the bank. However, the second uh, customer in reality left the bank but it was predicted to stay in the bank. Uh, this third customer was predicted to stay in the bank and in reality it was stayed in the bank. The result looks really good, but the real way to check uh, with, is with our confusion matrix and then get the final accuracy for our artificial neural network model on the test side, which means on a new customer in which the model was not trained. Well, let us check this right now. This code first uh, imports the confusion matrix and the accuracy score function from the scikit-learn matrix module. These functions are used to evaluate the performance of a machine learning model. The next line of code uses the confusion matrix function to calculate the confusion matrix for the Y test and the Y prediction array. The confusion matrix is a table that shows the number of correct and incorrect prediction made by the model. The third line or third line of code prints the confusion matrix to the console. The fourth line of code uses the accuracy score function to calculate the accuracy of the model. The accuracy score is the percentage of predictions that the model made correctly. Let us play that cell. And excellent. We get an accuracy over 85%. That's very good. Because it means that out of 100 customers, we uh, were predicted correctly to either staying or leaving the bank. And we can actually see the details of this prediction. We have around 1,521 correct prediction that the customers stay in the bank and we have 198 correct predictions that the customer will leave the bank. We have 74 incorrect predictions that the customer leaves the bank and 207 predictions that the customer stays in the bank. So anyway, that uh, looks pretty good. An accuracy of 85% uh, is very decent accuracy. Of course, feel free to modify the model and try to get a better accuracy with 1 or 2% extra accuracy, but don't waste too much on this. So that's it for predicting the test result set, which is the held out test data that our artificial neural network model has not seen before, and how to, to evaluate our artificial neural network model using the confusion matrix. All right, guys, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned about making prediction and evaluating an artificial neural network. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.